What is up, heroes? This is Midnight Zero, and welcome back to Let's Play Zero Escape Virtue's Last Reward Blind. In the last episode, we tried to remember what was going on. We're still struggling with that. However, we uh, we had some quality time with Phi, and that's the, the real gist of it. We learned quite a bit from her, and I was saying that in this timeline, I think we have the best trust with her, and I think we were... Yeah, we were preparing to get ready to go through the white door. However, now we're heading back to the infirmary to reunite with the rest of the group. Luna looks rather distressed and is saying, Oh, there you are. You're late. What were you doing? Nothing. <laughs> Fire's so sus. When we arrived, everyone else was already back. Quark and Alice hadn't left, of course. Well, I'm glad to see they appear as healthy as they were when uh, we left them. Nothing bad happened to them in our absence. They were both sleeping soundly. Any traces of the madness we'd seen earlier long gone. Clover told us. You've seen the bomb in the control room? Yeah, with our own eyes. So what the heck should we do? That makes three bombs. Well, we have to do something. They're bombs for God's sake. There is a quick and simple solution. Really? <laughs> Let's just blow them all up. Remember what Alice said? There should be an emergency deactivation password. If you enter that password, the device should, well, deactivate. You see it? Right here. There's a port. If we can find the password input device, we just connect it here. Then we can enter the password. So if we have the password, we can deactivate them? Whoa, whoa, hold on a second. That's great and all, but we need that password input device she was talking about. Without that, we're still boned even if we did have the password. Not a problem. We've resolved that issue. Huh? Show them. I nodded and pulled it out of my pocket. I can I can't help but when Fi's like, show them, Sigma, basically. It reminds me from the Danganronpa where Kirigiri would say something like, Oh, and like I know that you're the one who did it, and there's why. Tell him, Nagi. <laughs> or was it what was it? Did did Togami say that? I think it was Togami actually. There was some really funny moment that's coming to mind where it's like, tell him, Nagi. That was in the safe in the control room. Exactly. We didn't have any idea what, what it was at first, but Phi figured it out. After Clover left, we tested it. Turned out I was right. Oh, so that's what they did in, that in, in the interim. It fit perfectly. Couldn't get it to do anything, though. We plugged in a couple of random characters, but all we got was an error. Still, I'm sure this is the thing Alice was talking about. We just didn't have the right password. But why was it in the control room? Do you think Zero Senior put it here for us? That would suggest it was also Zero Senior who set up the bombs. Doesn't that seem odd, though? Zero Senior wants us to play the Nonori game, right? So why would he set bombs? Maybe he wants to blow this whole place up if someone commits some crazy violation of the rules. I don't think that's incredibly likely. 
And I think if that were the case, there would be no need to really flex just how much uh, explosive power, you know, Zero's packing in the place. That doesn't make sense. Our bracelets already have poison in them. Yeah, that's 100% true. If someone breaks a rule, all he has to do is activate their bracelet. Yeah, I mean, Zero, for whatever reason, could have each of them killed at any point that they want. Yeah, you're right. Well, whatever the case is, there's one thing we can be sure of. The person who set these bombs is one of us. Whether or not that person is also Zero Senior isn't particularly relevant at the moment. But what is relevant is that they know the deactivation password. If we can figure out who that person is and question them, we can get the password and turn the bombs off. Is it going to be the same password for every bomb? Exactly. That would be my quick and easy method. So fess up. Which one of you set the bombs? This, uh, this seems like it's going to be an end of a route, right? It's going to be a to-be-continued, because to my knowledge, we don't really know who it is yet. I don't think we have the information to really deduce who it is. Maybe we do, but... I don't see it. <laughs> Not that I expect you to do that. But of course, Phi and Sigma have the ability to tap into their consciousnesses from other timelines and utilize the information they've gathered there to deduce who it is. So we're going to be checking everyone. Checking us? Yes. Once they're set, the bombs are controlled by remote. Interesting, so does this sort of like unite with the other timeline? It stands to reason that whoever set them has that remote. So, you're going to search us for it? Yes. But... No buts. If you refuse, that implicates you. Do what I say and you'll be fine, assuming you are actually innocent. Understand? No reason to wait. Let's get started. Anyone want to volunteer to go first? No? Alright, let's see. Everybody awkwardly looking away. When you don't want to get called on in class. Wait, huh? You only need to search one person. What? Why? Because I figured out who did it. I I know who did it. The words were out of my mouth before I'd even realized I was saying them. This is awfully familiar. <laughs> How can you... There's no way. Yeah. I met Fai's gaze and nodded, then turned away. I know who set the bombs. That person... Yeah, we still have not seen anywhere near enough to figure it out. That person, you did it! The room was suddenly silent. Yep, another 2B continued with that ominous soundtrack in the background. Okay. Well, I guess we can, uh, I guess I'll save here for the time being. And then... We take a look at the flowchart. Very interesting. And also, for those of you that are saying there's got to be some way to zoom out in the flowchart, 
I haven't been able to figure it out, but if I click this return button, it takes me back to the very beginning of the game and I have to watch Sigma on Christmas get gassed again and wait until I can access the menu. It's not a huge deal, but it's a little bit annoying. So, wow. So there's a lot going on here. Who planted the bomb? Lock number nine. But then this is a separate one, lock number seven. Huh. So there are two separate ones where we plant the bomb. We have no idea what happens after this. Actually, I'm fairly confident it's a bad end, given that we have a lock over here for who planted the bomb, but there's quite a bit that goes on afterwards. So whatever happened in this one, we don't really know. Um, well, we know that it's probably not going to be too great. So what did we choose here during the AB game? We chose ally, and that led to this route on the left. So now I'm tempted to see what happens if we choose Betray here. I will, I admit guys, I know in a lot of your comments you are reminding me of different timelines and what's going on in them, but but the reality is I don't remember the different timelines super well, so um, just bear with me. But I think we'll jump to this game and see what happens here if we choose Betray instead. I don't remember who we're even really partnered up with or anything like that. So I'm sure we'll get a refresher soon enough. So two minutes remain. So this is where we're paired up with Luna. Um, if Clover isn't voting, then she's defaulting to ally. Betraying someone who isn't even playing hardly seems fair. Of course, I think so too. Okay, so this is where we spent time with Clover. Where was that again? Where was that? Was that in... I don't remember. I'm just glad to hear you say it. Maybe I should take a look at the flowchart real quick, just to be safe. Also, are there any other locks we've opened up? I don't think so. So that's good to know. Yeah, so let's refresh on this. So this is where we chose, well, first of all, we choose to betray Alice. And then we go into the chromatic doors. We go to the green door, which is the archives, okay? And then after the archives, we try to find Alice when she's gone berserk. And we use our morphogenetic powers to find exactly where she went. And that takes us to the AB game. And Clover is probably staying behind in order to uh, watch over her. Okay, I don't remember what everybody else was up to in this game, but I'm sure we'll get a refresher soon enough. So, not to be sappy, but it was like a ray of sunshine on a cloudy day. Grinned back at her before I knew what I was doing. So we're going to skip this because we've had all this. Ah, this is the timeline where in, well, when we choose ally, we get the whole conversation with Luna about um, the bluebird and everything because we lie to her. We yell at her, in fact. But we're going to choose betray. Feel really bad about it. You know, that's, uh, that's how this game tends to work, right? And then we're going to shock the world when we choose to betray Clover, who <laughs> didn't even have a, you know, a chance. Oh boy, Luna and I stepped out of the AV room. I could see the others filing out of their rooms as we did. Why? I didn't have an answer for her. All I could think about was that white liquid. What was it? Some kind of discharge? Blood? No, it couldn't be blood. Blood wasn't white. That was insane. I was lost in thought when Luna spoke. Um, I'm going to the infirmary. Huh? Don't you want to see the results? Why? I already know what they're going to be. Your usually warm personality seemed to have gone cold. Ugh, feels bad. Whether it was because I'd chosen Betray, or because she noticed that something was wrong with my body, I couldn't say. I can tell you. Excuse me. And with that, she was gone. Well, I guess we can see how everybody else voted. There's no guarantee it'll go the same way it did before. I turned back to the projection. With heavy steps, I headed toward K, Dio, and Temyoji. All right, results. Let's take a look. 
Wow. So few people. So, K and Quark ally, Phi allies with them. So, everybody else allies. <laughs> Classic. <laughs> the only one to betray. Lovely. So, Alice allies because she wasn't there. Temyoji and Dio. Is this the one where Temyoji punches Dio? If so, that's this This might be the best time. Like, <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Uh, Temyoji and Dio went together? Question mark. And then I think K... K went because Quark stayed behind, and I think Phi stayed behind too, or, or something like that. We'll find out soon, I'm sure. So at this point, we have nine points, which is quite a bit of a different take. Everybody seems super upset with us, understandably so. What the heck? Sigma has 9 BP? See, I told you. The Bak has finally shown his true colors. What the heck are you doing? Clover isn't even voting. I have misjudged you. I never thought you would do something so cowardly. There was nothing I could say. I had chosen betray of my own volition, but had I really? That's a great question. Like, I really enjoy that. Had I really? Or was it some other presence choosing this for me because I needed to explore this route? Was my initial decision, was every other bit of me really trying to choose ally when I chose betray for some inexplicable reason? Had I really pressed that button of my own free will? The more I thought about it, the more I felt as if some other force had guided my hand to the button. Perhaps it had been fear? I was scared by the white fluid that had appeared on my palm. Maybe that had been the tipping point, that I decided that I had to escape as soon as possible. Whatever the consequences. If I got out, then the nightmare would be over. And that's all it was, right? A nightmare. It couldn't be real. White blood was insane. Impossible. That was when I looked up and saw the others staring at my hand. Crap. I quickly put my hand behind my back, but it was already too late. They moved toward me like wolves closing in for the kill. S Sigma. What was that? He was cut. It must have been blood. But why was it white? Isn't that obvious? He's not human. Not human? No. What are you saying? Of course I'm human. I'm 100% human. Then explain that white stuff. I swear to God, I have no idea what it is. You have to believe me. I believe, I'm afraid you're not being very convincing. Yeah, I mean, this past round, have, if anything, has decreased their ability to believe in him by anything more than you know, the game up until this point. Oh, you're one to talk. We can't even see you. Could be a robot. Maybe that's not even a suit. That's just you, robot you. No. That seems extremely unlikely. However bad my amnesia might be, I'm quite sure of my humanity. I am, without a doubt, not a robot. They probably just programmed you to think that. Yeah, I mean, neither of you is making any compelling argument that you're not a robot, or really making any different of an argument. Alright, it's pretty obvious this guy is dangerous and probably unhinged. We should take him down. I agree. Uh-oh. Put him up, Sigma. This guy hit three-on-one battle and we know how strong Temyoji is. Looks like there's no other way. Now that he's got 9 BP from stabbing Clover in the back, there's a good chance he'll try and get out of here by himself. Hey. Hold on a minute. Let's not do anything rash.
I didn't have a choice. I spun around and ran for the number nine door. No. I don't think so. Yikes. Let go. Let go of me. I was no match for all three of them. Before I could take two steps, I was on the floor, pinned. The desperation was only getting stronger, however, and I writhed and twisted in a futile attempt to get free. Darn it! You have to let me go! This is all some kind of mistake! A misunderstanding! It's... it's a conspiracy! Huh, <laughs> so there's a conspiracy to turn your blood white? You're a funny guy. S Stop trying to get away! It's over! Crap! Get off me! Let me go! If you won't calm down, then you leave me no choice. I had hoped we could avoid this. Try not to struggle too much. No! Don't! Was that the, the an anesthetic again? Possibly? Probably? Surely a game over either way. The first thing I felt when I woke up was the hard pain of a bruise all the way across my neck. Oh, so it wasn't the anesthetic. He did the, you know, the classic chop in the back of the neck, I'm sure. Kay must have suffocated me. Oh! Even worse. My head felt like it had been stuffed with cotton and I had to put out a hand to steady myself as I stood up. Where am I? Is this the infirmary? How long had I been out? What's that on the floor? Oh, that's the thing used to inject. My foot bumped into something, and I looked down to see the injection gun. A glass vial labeled Soporil was still attached to it. The anesthetic. After choking me, they made sure I wasn't getting up in the near future. That meant I could have been asleep for a long time. Where is everyone? I glanced around the room. Yeah, it is pretty shocking to me that... that he was left completely unattended. It was empty. Except for me. It took me a moment to realize what was especially odd about that. Even Quark and Alice had disappeared. What the heck's going on? That was when I noticed it. Quark and Alice weren't the only things that had disappeared. Two other things, two other very important things were also gone. My bracelet... And my left hand... What? What? They actually cut off his left hand? What? That's insane. That's that's way too much. Wow. I mean, I guess if they are really intent on, you know, the idea that Sigma's gonna leave him behind, and if it's a life or death situation, I guess I can understand why somebody would do that, but... Wow! And they took his bracelet, so they're just kind of going about the rest of the game without him. And I guess Sigma can't participate. For a long moment, I just stared, dumbstruck. What I was seeing couldn't possibly be real. There's also no way they successfully removed this guy's left hand without him bleeding out or anything. But there it was. A smooth cross-section of my arm where a hand should have been. A thick white liquid dripping slowly from the stump. Wha- what is this? Oh god, oh god, oh god, oh god. A scream clawed its way out of my body, taking my mind with it. Then after that, nothing. Yikes. So yeah, that's the game over, I'm sure. Yeah, so game over. Part of me is wondering though, well, I mean, that sound, that, that's probably the most gruesome, worst game over we've gotten. But the other thing is, if you were, I, I wish they commented on his hand and what it looked like and whether or not it confirmed that it was, you know, robotic or not. All right, so looking at the timeline, it looks like we've extended every bit, I guess, choosing Alice to work with, um, to its final round. Uh, to, we need to explore the other basic timelines, right? Because our very first choice was going through the cyan door, working with Alice, and then choosing whether or not to betray her leads to some very important timeline decisions. 
But now it's actually quite a bit different. We're going to be exploring some much bigger. Actually, you know, let's let's mess around with some of the uh, controls here. Scroll wheel, right click, right click. There we go, guys. So right click is how you zoom out. For those of you that were wondering, including myself. So what do we want to do next? Well, I mean, we'll choose somebody who's not Alice, I guess, and I, I don't really want to choose that based on how the flowchart looks. Granted, we have a whole bunch more eggs to explore in all these timelines, so let's let's give it a go. Okay, Fi and I will go through the magenta door with Luna, go through the yellow door with Tenmyoji. I'm curious, I feel like we've learned a lot about Luna so far, and so it might seem a little bit boring to do so, but I'm tempted to continue to learn more about Luna by going through the magenta door with her. So let's go ahead and do that. I think we'll pair up with Luna and head through the magenta door. Are you guys good at that? Sure. Alright. Then Clover and I will go with Alice. As long as I get to go with Alice, I'm fine. Oh yeah, that's going to be a very interesting implication of this game, right? Or this timeline is now Clover and Alice are going to get to spend some time together. I don't have any objections. We'll be going through the yellow door, right? That means Dio, Quark, and I are going, are doing the cyan door. Ugh. Stuck with a kid in some old fart. <laughs> that old guy totally beat you down in another timeline. I can't see how this could possibly go badly. Hmm. <laughs> well, maybe we'll get lucky and you'll pull your head out of your butt. What'd you just say? Tenyoji's great. <laughs> Ten seconds remain until chromatic doors close. I will say it's pretty interesting. <laughs> we need to hurry. I, I feel like I don't have a really solid favorite character yet. There's no character I particularly identify with at this point. Some are a little bit more likable than others, but but it's not like there's a clear favorite. All right, guys, let's get moving. Chromatic door is closing. So I'm trying to think back to 999. And honestly, a lot of the characters, I think, were, were really likable. I mean, Junpei and Akane, in particular, had a lot of character development. It was very easy to grow attached to them as the player. Oh, what was it? Um, Lotus eventually became a really interesting character as well. Um, Santa, right. Uh, he was also just like a super cool character design. And um, I don't know, I'm not, not really getting that from the characters in this game yet. It's not like they're bad characters by any means, but I just don't feel incredibly attached to them yet. Phi is the most perplexing of all of them, probably. But honestly, that that Clover ending, that one ending, you know, Clover ending from 999, is probably still my favorite. <laughs> That ending alone just like shot Clover up my character rankings from 999. What is this place? Didn't you see the door? Fi still sassy. It said this is the lounge. The lounge? Does that mean there's somebody living here? Well, there doesn't seem to be much dust. Maybe there is. Hmm. So you've got a well-used lounge right next to a big empty warehouse. What is this building for? Beats me. It looks like there are four doors in here. Yeah, the one we came in, the one opposite, and two more on the left and right. The two on the sides are covered with metal plates, though. Don't think we'll be opening them anytime soon. I guess that just leaves us one option. No good. This one's locked, too. 
I didn't see any other doors in the hallway we came through. Maybe we can find one of the keys to the AB room in here somewhere. <laughs> well, it's not gonna find itself. Let's go! Alright, time to seek a way out of the lounge. Ooh, and this music. Interesting. It, I always look forward to hearing the music from the different escape rooms because overall the soundtrack, I feel like there are very few songs that truly, you know, like stand out. There's a lot of similarity between the different songs, but, but it's always good music. I always enjoy listening to songs. My favorite, my, ooh, now it's getting pretty unique. Yeah, I always, I always look forward to seeing what the soundtracks are going to be. One of my favorites are some of those that were playing when Phi was explaining us, you know, the quantum mechanics and all that stuff before. When you know you're really digging deep into some mystery, exploring. Uh, th those are some of my favorite themes. But, of course, we're going to tackle the lounge in the next episode. I hope you guys enjoyed this one. Just a little bit lower energy, so I appreciate you guys' patience as, you know, working through maybe a little bit of a low point uh, in, in the playthrough. But I'm really curious to see what this new branch is going to be. I feel like in the past few episodes, we kind of jump in from timeline to timeline with not super remarkable breakthroughs, but but there's a lot of in jumping. And I'm looking forward to the more continuous playthrough of a particular timeline that I think we're going to be experiencing on these bigger branches now. So that should be fun. But until the next episode, it's been Night Zero, and this mission is complete. Goodbye.